powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios, it's Football at Four. Football at Four is powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. It's brought to you by Bet365. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365. Adam Kaplan's here, co-host of the Inside the Birds podcast, which you can get on all social, excuse me, podcasting platforms, and you can search for their YouTube channel. Just search Inside the Birds. Adam Kaplan is back, everybody, as the Eagles are back this Monday night. We don't even get Sunday Eagles again. We got to wait till Monday night football, Adam Kaplan, but they're coming out of the bye, just like the Chiefs, by the way. So let's start there as we take a look at the Eagles after the bye week, my friend. How are you? Oh, well, Mike, yeah, look, it. They don't play till Monday night at uh, 8.15 Eastern. It's kind of weird. They have this really daunting schedule over the next five games. Coming out of the bye, the, the Bills, who are struggling, fire their offense coordinator day. Ken Dorsey, uh, not surprised, kind of felt like this was going to happen. Sean McDermott uh, has a history of moving on from coaches. Uh, did it with Leslie Frazier, who left under mysterious circumstances. He was never announced as being fired, but that was odd that the way that he left. So they're kind of a team that's in turmoil. Then they play the Niners, who had a great win. They play the Cowboys, who could score. But we know they find ways to lose. Then the Seahawks, who could score then, as we were talking about on our Monday morning show on Inside the Birds. Boy, if they get through that gauntlet, then they play the dregs of the National Football League, the Giants, Toys, and the Cardinals. Yes, uh, that we know coming up at the end of the year. They do still play the Giants twice in Arizona. <laughs> so uh, keep that in mind. Let's get some concerns from Adam Coming into week 11, let's start on the offensive side of the ball. If you are Brian Johnson, Nick Sirianni, and you are sitting in the offensive room, what are three offensive concerns coming into week 11? Yeah, so, Mike, when you look at Jalen Hurts before the bye, yes, he was running against Dallas. He ran the ball 10 times. He still didn't look right. As we talked about in our self-scout, getting him off his feet during the bye where he could rest that left knee, which has lingered for several weeks, really a couple months now. And plus, you know, he didn't run great earlier in the season. There was the one part of his game where he just was not there, his explosive running. But getting him off his feet was a good thing. So that the, the question there would be, well, okay, will he still run? Are they going to run him at a high volume? Ten times the last game was surprising. Um, you know, it's not like Swift didn't run the ball a lot. He had 18 carries. Swift averaging about 17 carries a game, which is a little bit higher. How are they going to run that? How are they going to work that running game going forward here? Is it going to be much the same? Because, look, there are always tweaks. There are always tweaks to, to offense or, or defense when you come out of your body. You don't do everything exactly the same. Yes, you, you have the same playbook. That scheme is going to change. The scheme's not going to change. The playbook won't change. But it's how you call it and how you deploy your personnel. We talked to John D. Flippo about that the former Eagles uh, uh, quarterbacks coach, about that for Patreon uh, during the Eagles self-scout, and John brought that up. No, you don't change really anything. You just you, you kind of look at some things that you haven't done. Maybe since training camp, you might bring a couple plays out, but you're not going to change one. But again, it's how you deploy the personnel, and I'm interested to see that. Uh, Adam, obviously, you know, Hurts is a big part of this uh, offense and what how it works. And that left knee, is he going to run a lot? But what about the run game in general? Can they get that going without Hurts? Well, that, that's, Mike, that, that's going to be the question. Um, because everything with the run game last year ran off of Hurts. But, see, it won through Swift. See, that's the thing. They're down in RPO percentage, our percentage, RPO percentage calls. Uh, they're down a, a significant amount. And now, now the question is if Cam Jurgens could come back this week, the running game has a chance to be much better. See, that's the thing when we talk about why is the running game kind of falling off here, no matter what Nick Sirianni says. We have the gift of sight. We know it doesn't look as good. Whatever Nick wants to say is fine, but it's one of the few times that I've agreed with uh, disagree with him over the last couple of years. Running game has not been as lethal. I don't think it has much to do with Hurts, whether than I, I don't think some of the holes have been there. And that, that's the hope here with Jurgens, in all likelihood coming back it's, this week. It's not a lock, by the way. It, it just depends on how he looks in practice. But if he's back, Mike, based on the way that he played, we forget how good he was before he sprained his foot. If he's back, that's another reason why this, this running game could be, could be uh, really looking a lot better 
uh, during the second half run here. Yeah, Jurgens, uh, you're right. You know, they had Sayamala, he left. Jurgens came in, he got hurt. They went to Suo Peta, he was out. Uh, and last week, Tyler Steen. Uh, played so they really have had uh, a, a ro- rotating door at the right guard spot. We'll see there, uh, and then of course, how are they going to go with tight end without Dallas Goddard? Will they use that guy as more of a blocker to help the run game? Is uh, you know we didn't see Goddard really flourish in the pass game this year, so that'll be interesting to see how they utilize him because they played without Goddard last year and actually played pretty well without him, save for the first game. Yeah, the production was down last year without Goddard, but. I'll tell you what, Jack Stahl and Calcaterra did a decent job. I remember that Colts game where they had to come back. They didn't play particularly well offensively, but they did some good things in that game. And Yeah, look, it, see, the way they're going to do this is it'll be Stahl, Calcaterra, and, and, uh, and Albert O. And then they, they, and then they Noah Tungi, I was signed back to the practice squad. So you always have to have four tight ends with your 69-man roster, so they're able to do that. So they'll go forward in doing that. Uh, they, it's you know they've been through this before. Now, Goddard's an excellent blocker, really is. They'll miss him in that area. Stoll's not been as good as last year as a blocker. Uh, more is going to be put on him in the blocking, obviously, w- without Goddard. Uh, now the question also, which I didn't put on my list, but I'm going to add this before we move to defense. The Eagles are what we call a big 11-12 personnel offense. Some weeks are more 11, some weeks are more 12. It just depends on on who's available and the opponent. So that's the question coming out of the bye with eight, with Julio Jones obviously on the roster. Uh, with, once Quez Watkins comes back, what do they do? Are they more 11 or 12 without Goddard? That, that's, that's certainly going to be interesting to see what they do there. All right, Adam Kaplan, we've got uh, the defensive side of the ball, some concerns coming into week 11. I would guess uh, there's more concerns on defense than there is on offense. Oh, way, way more. Well, Look, but some could be alleviated, and let me explain why. So let's skip the defensive line because there are really no questions there. We, we know what the rotation is. We know they're set. I mean, they're, they're in pretty good shape there. But at, at inside linebacker, the Eagles are an odd man front, so they, they have two inside backers. Dean's out. We, we, don't, we still don't have an exact timeline. He's going to be out a while. He, hasn't put on, he has not been put on IR yet. But to use this roster spot, they have till money at 4 p.m. Eastern for this week's game. So they can do whatever they want. They, they don't, they're in no rush to do it. It could be tomorrow. It could be Monday. It doesn't really matter. But if they want to use it, then they'll do that. Uh, but we know this. It'll be Morrow and Cunningham going forward here. Christian Ellis right now is the number three. Uh, they don't have a number four, really. They've got Brandon, Brandon Smith, who was overdrafted by the Panthers last year. They cut him. Really, by the way, Mike, he was a fourth-round pick, and they cut him. I mean, they, he didn't contribute at all. He's a developmental linebacker. Uh, that's really it, because when, when you really look at uh, their situation at inside linebacker, they play a specific way. There's certain things that they ask these guys to do. You know, Ben Van Sumeren, Mike really is a limited player. He's super athletic, as we, we noted when they drafted, when they signed him as an undrafted free agent. He's got a long way to, to be able to be on the field as a linebacker. He's more of a special teams player. That's why he was brought up the, the other week only. And that's the way they'll use him the rest of the season if he's ever on the roster show. The depth at inside linebacker, Mike, is a question mark. That is one of the biggest issues on the football team. Just think about it, Mike. If they lose another player there, they're down to Ellis, who's very limited, and they don't have anybody else. So, you know, I I have their workout list the last couple weeks. They've uh, They've only really worked out. And Anthony Barr is really not an inside linebacker. He's a 34 strong side, really an outside linebacker who in certain fronts you could play him inside, and he's going back to the Vikings side in many ways to their practice squad. So to me, Mike, they've got a, they've got a problem here. They've got to be careful with the depth. Yeah, and they showed you that, as you mentioned, they brought in Barr, so they've already uh, kind of told you, hey, we do need something there. And, and I don't know, I'll ask you, is it as easy as they did last year, went out and got Sue and Joseph to find a linebacker? No, here's the, the kind of guys that are out there. And remember, the Eagles run a specific front. They're not. They're a 34 front with two overhangs. However, they want to deploy it, but that's what that's what their that's what their base look is. It's going to be a. It, it's really difficult. I mean, it's just you, you can't just bring a guy out and unless he's got experience. You mentioned those two other guys now, because they're D tackles. You can. It's a lot easier to deploy that. Like if they're running a 43 front, you would only look for a specific type of inside linebacker. 
Cunningham is kind of odd for today's NFL because he's taller. Usually, I don't have a lot of tall uh, middle linebackers or inside linebackers. The list that I have, it's not very good. That may be a reason why they really have not worked anyone out. But that that is probably the biggest question mark going forward. The depth at inside linebacker and the depth at slot corner, which yeah. we'll get to in a minute. Yeah, let's get to that because uh, Bradley Roby, is he going to play Monday night? And if he does come back, Justin Evans, by the way, his window has opened up as yeah. well. Is he an option to play slot corner? Let's uh, look at that spot. All right, so Evans can – He's played nickel. He's played diamond his career with the Saints and the Eagles. He's not ideal as a slot corner. You can do it if you need him to. It's not what they need. This is a mistake by the Eagles not signing another veteran slot corner. They're, Bryce Callahan, I know about the foot injuries. I've outlined this now for a year on Inside the Birds. Uh, he knows the scheme. He's been in it. He's played in it. He's excelled in it. Yes, he's older. Uh, Logan Ryan, uh, people had asked us about that in our in our Patreon chat. Uh, he's made it clear he still wants to play. He could play safety. He was a he was a Pro Bowl slot corner for many years. He, I know he's older. He's in his thirties. No, this is the geriatric uh, group. Now we're playing with with Eagles in the secondary. Mike, oldest secondary by the way in the National Football League. It's it's not ideal, but a lot of experience, a lot of good play. You, that does worry me a little bit. I, I'd rather them get a. A younger slot corner to back up Roby, but I get it. They're, they're not all out there. It's going to be challenging, Mike. Uh, this is – boy, it's really funny. Last year, we, we really talked about depth because their depth was so good. Their injury situation was so good. We rarely talked about injuries because they got through it all. Not so much this season. Yeah, let's – real quick, uh, Byard, what do we expect now that he's going to be here for the fourth yeah. week? So, look, Mike, he's played every – look, he's starting, he's playing every snap. The hope is now, because he's been able to digest this, and he's actually had a, a week off to actually actually take a look back, and they could go by, over the cutups with him. That'll just he'll, he'll he'll execute better. That that's the biggest challenge for him right now, Mike. It's not his fault. He got thrown into the fire like that. It, it's really tough once the season starts. So I would expect him to play better uh, now that he has a better uh, idea of the scheme. Uh, and now, look, the, the, the good it, it, boy. One more thing I'll add before we get out of here: if Justin Evans could play. That means Sidney Brown does not have to be the four safety. Like they, they, they'll, they'll have they'll have depth there. They're actually a four guys as opposed to three, because that that they've been living dangerously with depth. Where last you know a couple times over the years they've dressed two tight ends and it's it, they've been able to get away with it, and you, which you shouldn't do. But th- this is dressing three safeties or not having a backup slot corner. I don't understand that one. Kind of caught them short because they lost their top two guys for the season. But they got to be careful here. You want to make a Super Bowl run, Mike. You you got to cover every base. I know it's hard, but they've got time the the, the final eight weeks. But it's not going to be easy. He's Adam Kaplan. You can check him out on the Inside the Birds podcast, where you can find on any podcasting platform or on their YouTube channel. Just search Inside the Birds. It's Eagles and Chiefs on Monday night, right here on ninety-seven three ESPN. Adam, we'll talk to you Friday. Sounds good.